Okay. Now I want to talk a new topic, also very important. We're going to use it in the power device later. Incomplete ionization. So do you know, we always say that I dope the silicon, right? I dope the silicon. This is the band gap, EC, EV, right? We always say that, oh, if I dope it, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Each of this can be a phosphorus, right? Silicon, phosphorus, silicon. We have impurity, open to make it for doping, right? So we have two electrons here, two electrons, two electrons, two electrons here, and then we have one extra electron, right? That was the picture that we had before. Extra electron, and we say, okay, this electron will move. But in reality, not all of them will move. This is because of incomplete ionization. So you have one electron, one electron, each of this phosphor, each one is phosphorus, right? So I have 10 electrons here. So in reality, what happened? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. In reality, this one electron ionized, this ionized, this ionized, this might not, this ionized, this ionized, my loss, this ionized, this ionized, this my loss. You only have six electron for current current. Okay. This is because I have a finite activation energy, like what I'm drawing here. In order to ionize this electron, they are not at the conduction band. I need some energy to activate. Not all of them will activate. Only parts of them will activate. And that is called incomplete ionization. So I'm going to discuss this on Wednesday and you have an assignment on this, okay? Uh, I will discuss assignment two, maybe during the review instead. I want to make, you, make sure you can do assignment three, okay? So we stop here. So we start the incomplete ionization, right? So last time I showed you this figure, right? In silicon, you have dopen. You put phosphorus. What type of dopen is this? Anyone can tell me? Is it N type or P type? Donor, P type. P type, yeah. And so you have an extra electron. If we use this classical view of covalent bond, right? You have eight electron for four bonds, so they are very stable. But you have a one extra electron, right? So this electron is going to ionize, then you feel, can uh, move freely, right? So this is a spatial diagram. If we go to the uh, energy diagram, that what it means is that, hey, I have all this phosphorus, I have 10 phosphorus atom, and then, some of them ionize. We expect all of them ionize, but actually it does not. Only six of them ionize. So the phosphorus that got ionized, they become positive charge, right? Those are not ionized, they are still neutral. And their electron does not contribute to the current conduction. And based on this, I can say the ionization rate is six over 10, 60%. Uh, does this make sense to you? So this is a picture uh, we never talked about when you were taking the uh, lower level class, right? We always say, I put one E20 phosphorus, all of them will ionize. But now I tell you that not all of them. The reason is because there is a finite energy between this phosphorus and the conduction band. We call it ED. Anything that requires energy, it means that not all of them can ionize. Make sense? 
So if the ED is small, do you expect more ionization or less ionization? More. Say again. Uh, more. More ionization because it's easier, right? And then when the ED is large, it is less. Now, let me ask you also, right? So good, right? We already say that larger. This one, I, I think I better put ED instead of ET, right? ED means the distance. ET just means the level. Now, what if the temperature reduce? Do you expect more ionization or less? Just from pure physics point of view. Less. Less. Why? Less random motion. Very good, right? Not really. Uh, so this one you can derive in many different way. You say less random motion, right? Although it's not a rigorous uh, way to explain, but that is true, right? What you're talking about is correct in terms of concept. Basically, it's just you have uh, less energy. Uh, and what does it mean? If random motion means it's related to the distribution. And remember last time we talked about the Fermi direct distribution, right? It means you have less electron that have the energy to go through the barrier, right? But doesn't matter how you say, this is a very too important concept in your mind. It's just some intuitive thought. You don't need to go through equation, yes. Larger energy, more difficult to climb up. Uh, less temperature, lower temperature, more difficult to climb up. So you will expect it become worse. So let me ask you one more time. If the ET is large, do you expect higher or lower resistance? If the ED is large, if the ionization is large, do you have a larger or lower resistance? What is ET? Larger resistance. Larger. Here, uh, ED is the ionization energy. This one. The distance between the conduction band and the trap energy. Or from here to here. ED. I have a typo. It should be ED here. Okay. So larger resistance. Because you have less mobile electron. Right? So when temperature go down, what happens? Do you have a larger or a lower resistance? Lower resistance. Why lower resistance when you have lower energy, lower temperature? Uh, sorry, I mean lower temperature, not energy. So when temperature goes down, would the resistance go up or go down? Go down, I think. Do you have more carrier in the conduction band or less carrier when the temperature go down? Less carrier. So when you have less carrier, do you have higher conductivity or lower conductivity? Lower conductivity. So then do you have higher or lower resistance? Higher resistance. Now, I know why you are confused. We all know that metal has higher conductivity when the temperature go down. And now you're telling me semiconductor is opposite. That is right. And that is why semi, one of the important difference between semiconductor in, and metal. Conductivity goes down when the temperature goes down for semiconductor because it has less ionization. Yes, the mobility is larger, but the concentration, but the uh, concentration of the uh, dopant of the carrier becomes less because they are all trapped in the donor. Is that okay? Now, that is okay, right? Probably you understand. But then we need to have an equation, right? We're going to derive it. And this is the equation you're going to use in your assignment. Again, I apologize. We need to wait until now to do it. Uh, there's a student on Monday asked me how to do it. I say, just wait for Wednesday. I hope it's okay with his schedule. But, uh, but again, this week we want to wrap up. I hope you learn on the spot on the same week and do the midterm. And then we move very fast to the 
other topics. Okay, this one is referring to this. So if I have a dopen, right, one e ten, one e twenty, I put into the silicon. Do not expect they will all ionize because it has a trap level et. Okay, and the amount it ionize is nd. And this is the same as electron density, right? So here I have n equal to six ionized atom, or or let me just atom phosphorus, right? And I have n equal to six mobile electron. Is that okay? Do you see the scenario? Like, don't worry about the equation. Let's say I give you. Do you see the scenario? So this is one. But unfortunately, it's not that simple. Okay? When you keep increasing the doping concentration, very interestingly. So I need to give this, of course, is called incomplete. ionization right the name is very meaningful it's just not completely ionized but at the same time you actually have energy lowering when you increase the doping concentration so i, I probably should say ionization energy lowering so what does it mean? Look at this equation. When the doping concentration increase, the ionization energy, ED, actually reduce. It reduces from the value that you have low, very low concentration, and then gradually this one is going to approach the conduction band. So this is the good thing. If you dope your semiconductor stronger, the ionization energy actually is lower. Okay, any questions? And finally, when it is ND is very high, then it will form what we call in purity band. So what does it mean? The ion, the energy is not the still not the same as the conduction band, right? It it becomes lower and lower, but it still has not touched the conduction band. But it forms a band by itself. Just imagine I have this atom. Phosphorus, low concentration, right? Let's say 10 to the power 17. If I keep adding, then they are so close, they actually form a continuous impurity band. They even don't need to touch the conduction band of silicon. And because of that, they just transport within the impurity band. So they are no longer immobile. So here I have an electron immobile. But when you form the impurity band, impurity band, the electron can move in the impurity band. Why is called impurity? Because we just treat phosphorus as some impurity to the uh, silicon, right? So I have introduced the concept of incomplete ionization. Any questions? Just purely the concept. Don't think about the equation yet. Uh, where does the trap energy play into that equation? Uh, which equation? This one? 
Uh, yeah, that. Uh, yeah. Indeed. So this trap is the absolute energy. So you can see that ED equals to EC minus ET. So EC maybe this is just a relative scale. Maybe this is four EV, right? This may be three point nine five EV, right? Then your ionization energy is zero point zero five EV. That's what it means. EC and ET just the absolute height, and ED is the difference. So ET is the is the trap energy. ET. Yeah, ET is the trap energy, this one, the location. Make sense? Yes, thank you. Can the ED become a negative, less than zero? It can, it can become, uh, but, but usually, <sighs> this is a very good question. <laughs> Just say no, okay, for, for our purpose. Because now it becomes a very complicated thing. When ED, this is just an approximation. So actually this is not a completely correct model. When your doping density is so large, your silicon is no longer a silicon because you have so much phosphorus. It becomes a new material. You can say that these two bands just merge together as a very broad band. Okay, so, but definitely you can say when doping is very large, all of them will ionize because it's just like negative, then they will just go to EC, right? Because you have a trap level here, the electron will just drop to EC. Then of course they ionize. But before that, you already formed the impurity band. You see what I mean? Yes. Just one more question. What, is there any reason this graph is slanted? Okay, because uh, I, I, this was for my other purpose that under the electric field, so you, sh uh, you can use this one. So this is slanted just because I have the electric field. That's why it is slanted, but you okay. can ignore it. Yeah. Okay. Very good question again. Uh, I had a question about um, the second a problem in the homework, uh, just how it relates to this, what would ND zero be? Because I'm not seeing um, what that concentration would be in the question. Okay, I will go to that if you want. Let me finish the next slide, then we talk about the homework for that question. Okay. Okay. Now, then I want to derive the equation, right? So how do we get this equation? And now what we have learned earlier will be useful. Right. So first of all, what is the probability of occupying the trap? Right? Although it's called a trap, but do not forget this is, is just a state now this is not fermi level right this is et this is e c okay and let me use another color maybe let's say for example i don't know where it is let's say this is e f okay so here we are talking about the trap so if you have e f e e f here you still have this fermi direct distribution correct still have something like this. This is 0 0.5. And then how much is occupied in the trap? We know that F, Fermi Dirac distribution in the trap equals to just the Fermi Dirac distribution uh, equation, E T minus E F divided by K T plus one. However, we need to add this one, one over G. G is the so-called degeneracy factor. So 
this this is a little too deep. Uh, so you don't you can ignore it. But basically, what it is saying is that for a trap, you might be able to fill two electron, and this all depends on the symmetry or uh, the stuff. For boron, it will be four. For phosphorus, it will be two. That is computed from the uh, solid state physics, right? And because of this, it modified the occupation a little bit, right? So for the same number of trap, the degeneracy will be different. Okay, so this is the uh, occupation, right? Then how many, right? This is one. Then how many trap? Uh, occupy. How many? Can you tell me how to calculate how many traps are occupied? I give you the distribution function already, right? And we say, I have not told you, and we say we have N, I think it's D, right? Let me make sure the symbol, N D zero, actually N D zero dopen. Okay, for example, I put 1E19. I put 1E19 dopant. So I have N D0 number of state. So how many traps are open, occupied, based on this? Based on what we discussed last time? 1E19. Say again. So last time, what did we say? Is the... Lumber of state times what give you the lumber of occupancy? I have n d zero dopant, and the probability of occupying is d trap, right? So this is the lumber of traps that are occupied. Make sense? For example, if the probability is 0 0.2 and I have 1 E19, right? Let's say this is 0 0.2. Then it will be 1 E19 times 0 0.2 equal to 5 2 E18. Is this okay? And we just say that when they use some of them, you have electron, some does not have electron, right? Now this is 0 0.2, I cannot put too many, right? This all ionized, right? And I call, I say this is ND equal to N, right? I have ND number of ionized trap. So, this is also equal to N D zero minus N D. Right? For example, this one may be eight E eighteen. And this is one E nineteen. So it means for one E nineteen of the trap, eight E eighteen are ionized. I have two E eighteen that still occupy here. Yeah, feel free to ask, is this clear? That might be related to the question the student just asked about homework, right? If we can understand this, probably you understand homework. Oh, Professor, can you please explain the ND0 part again? ND0 is the lumber of doping of phosphorus, the concentration of phosphor doping. is how much you put into the Silicon, so it is given or you need to deduce. Let's say 1E19, for example. Do I answer your question? Uh, yes, Professor. 
but this is only for NT0. It means how many seats, how many rooms are in the building? That's basically what I'm saying. I have one E19 room. But how many of them are occupied? It depends on this Fermi direct distribution. And for this energy, for example, maybe it is 0 0.2. It calculates from here. So it means 2E18 of the room have people occupying. But then the rest, those, those people, those electrons, they jump to higher level. They go to the second floor. Okay. So how many of them jump to the second floor? It is empty. Eight, e18 of them were to the, uh, went to the second floor. And that's why the total number of room minus of those that went to the second floor or minus those that is empty is equal to how many are still occupied, right? Total number of room minus those are empty is how many are still occupied. Is that okay? So I assume you are okay, right? Then what do we do? Just solve the equation. Nd0, and then plug into here, one over G exponential ET minus EF divided by KT plus one equal to ND zero minus ND. Okay, I don't want to spend the time, right? You just uh, do it, then you will get ND equals to ND zero divided by one plus G, right, exponential EF minus ET divided by KT, which is the same as what we have here. Okay, now someone just asked me about assignment three, right? Does that answer your question or no, not yet? Yes, thank you. You do? Okay, good. Then I won't go to assignment three. Basically in that question, I think I, I kind of forgot. I think I asked you to plot the ionization as a function of temperature also, right? But anyway, so any questions about incomplete ionization? Why I want to go for this derivation? I won't ask you to derive in the exam and I, uh, expect you, maybe you just write this for your cheat sheet, right? If I'm going to test. But in this the derivation process, you really understand what is the meaning of each of this symbol. I hope you understand now. And have this one in your picture. You have dopen. You intentionally add the dopen to the structure. Not all of them are ionized you know you put one E19, maybe 20% are not ionized. Well, how do we calculate? Just Fermi direct uh, distribution times the state. Of course, you need to know the Fermi level. It just need to solve self consistently, right? But if you know the Fermi level, you can calculate this easily, right? And then the rest are ionized. The rest ionized, what does it mean? I have a mobile electron. At the same time, I have plus charge atom. In the past, we all assumed they fully ionized. So I have one E19 electron and I have one E19 positive charge. So they are neutral. Now I have eight E18 electron, eight E18 positive charge, still neutral. And then I have two E18, just neutral, Phosphorus, they are not ionized. They are just a bulky impurity in silicon, but they do not contribute to any conduction. Incomplete ionization is important in two aspects. One is the wide band gap material, like silicon carbide, we're going to discuss later. Another is when you go to low temperature, even for silicon. Now I want to show you only this part, whole concentration. We have different concentration. For example, the bottom one, 
is stopped with 3E14. And then maybe this one is stopped with 1E18. This is 1 over T. Here is about 3000 Kelvin, means the room temperature. At room temperature, you will try to look at the whole concentration. You see, it's the same, almost the same as what we put in. But when you go to here, this is only 25 Kelvin, not even 4 Kelvin, which is required for quantum computing. You see that 1E18 becomes 1E16. Even first for this, it becomes 1E10. It is insulator because they are not ionized. But good thing is, if you look at the highly dot one, 1E19, it doesn't change much. That is because of the impurity band formation. So even they are not ionized to the conduction band, but they form a band by itself. They still can conduct electron. So in the when they start quantum computing, right? People don't know cryogenic well. Some people will say, oh, there's no hope for quantum computing uh, because all this silicon are going to freeze out the carrier. It's not going to conduct. But indeed, people already knew that if you have a high doping, it forms impurity band. You still can conduct the electron. Impurity band is not that difficult to understand, right? One is that you just think that they're so close. Another thing, just think about extreme. If you have very high phosphorus concentration, what does it mean? The silicon becomes phosphorus, right? Because <laughs> you have a lot of silic phosphorus. So you become just a new material. So it's not surprising to see a new band. It's no longer silicon. Of course, it is still silicon. We are still far away. It's still 1% atomic concentration or even 0.1%, but it actually changed the property a lot. Now, this is, originally I want you, there's a project for, to do the calibration for neutral impurity at the low temperature, but no one pick it, right? But anyway, this is related to cryogenic. And this is something for those who try to do the trap, they are going to face uh, some of this problem also. Although our goal is not trying to uh, look at this freezing effect, okay? So do you get the picture? Any questions? Is it clear? Okay, so we are done with incomplete analyzation, right? Now, uh, I hope you can do the homework. If not, let me know. Now, we also have CV uh, that uh, 